Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada Newsmakers on the broadcast today. Peter Guzman joins us. He's president of the Las Vegas Latin Chamber of Commerce. Here for the whole show on an all-new Nevada Newsmakers. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in, when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management is the place where companies can find workers' comp solutions that are designed to meet their specific business requirements. As regulations evolve, Pro Group takes a proactive approach to clear the path to make sure your business stays ahead of the curve. Knowing your workers' comp program is optimized, you can focus on other important matters related to your growing business. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. Safety is the number one priority for the trucking industry. Over $7 billion a year is spent on technology like this electronic eye that will apply the brakes automatically. But the most important factor for safety is the truck driver. These hardworking men and women who safely move over 70% of our nation's freight and 94% of Nevada's. We thank you because trucks move America forward. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no holds barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers broadcast headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we're delighted to welcome back to the program Peter Guzman. He is president of the Las Vegas Latin Chamber of Commerce. Pleasure to have you back on the program, sir. Sam, always a pleasure. It's actually an honor to be on this show. You've, uh, you've done this for a long time and, and have kept us informed. And I certainly appreciate all your work. Well, thank you very much. Let's start out with DACA and a federal judge uh, putting the kibosh on that for the time being. Um, the, the commentary that I've seen, um, and, and it makes sense, is, okay, it's time for Congress to act. They've been messing around for years. Um, they need to get this part done immediately, and then we can talk about what comes next. But what are your initial thoughts and what are the, your members saying to you about uh, the downfall of this moment of DACA? So obviously, you know, there was a lot of disappointment, but at the same time, I took it exactly uh, how you just said it. I'm very frustrated, quite frankly, uh, actually pissed off that this thing has been kicked down the road so many times. And, and, and listen, for me, the way I look at it, and I'll say this publicly, to me, immigration has become a, a, a political strategy for each side of the parties, uh, one way or the other, use it to their favor. And, and, and unfortunately, I gotta say, it, it works. You know, it, it obviously works, but at what cost? At what cost is that political strategy working? At the cost of individuals, of human beings that just wanna come here, work very hard, and you know, that story needs to be told. The honest story needs to be told of how important immigrants are to our, to not only Las Vegas, to Nevada, to our country. Specifically on DACA, you know, how you can, how you can have young folks who came here at no fault of their own, two, three years old, all, some of them only speak English, which actually upsets me. They should be bilingual, uh, but they have committed no crimes, done nothing wrong. Why should they be in jeopardy of being deported? Um, this is the United States of America. We can do it better. Um, and doesn't the fact, and we talked about this the last time you were on the program, doesn't the fact that um, the Hispanic vote is becoming so large and so valuable 
um, that it seems almost crazy for either party not to take advantage of the situation and promote this part of it, which would seem to be the least partisan part of immigration. Uh, you know, Sam, again, you hit it right on the nail. Listen, I'm shocked sometimes at the, the, the amount of disrespect uh, we Latinos, Hispanics continue to get because you're absolutely correct. This is an easy one in my eyes. And yet here we are still talking about the same old thing. Uh, you know, politic, let, let's take out humanity for a minute, talk politically. It is, it is silly for one of these parties to not just come out, embrace DACA, embrace these young people and take them over the finish line. Do you know what that would do to Hispanics? Do you know how loyal Hispanics are to people that are good to them? It's silly to go down this road continually. All right, so you bring up an incredibly important thing that I think a lot of Anglo business people don't understand is the loyalty of the Hispanic community. That if you reach out to them and just welcome them to your business, let alone anything else, that that word is going to spread throughout the community and you are going to see a huge increase in business because of it. Am I not correct? You are 100% correct. And again, let me emphasize, Hispanic or non-Hispanic, whether you're a Hispanic business owner or non-Hispanic, if you treat this demographic, these wonderful people with respect and dignity, they will be loyal to you, your business and your brand. This is a known fact, and but still uh, not taken full advantage of in the proper way in my eyes by, by many. So is this something, you know, just expanding this idea that corporations should get behind? Because from a financial point of view, Walmart, Target, other major companies like this um, didn't see uh, color. They saw, except one color, they saw green. So when you went into a, a Walmart 20 years ago, you saw the signage in English and, and Spanish. Um, is it something that corporations who donate vast amounts of money to political parties, both sides, should be pushing behind the scenes and saying, okay, enough already. We need the employees. Um, this is good for business. Um, and, and there's certainly enough to divvy up amongst both parties. It's not just one-sided. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, these corporations, and there's going to come a day where if they don't get on board, they're going to be called out. Uh, publicly because enough's enough. Uh, they have certainly taken advantage uh, uh, of the uh, incredible work ethic of the immigration uh, population, immigrant population, and, and they should now stand with, with us in passing immigration reform. We need comprehensive immigration reform. It is absolutely disgusting to me that it's no longer even talked about. You don't even hear those words. And yet we have a disaster at the border we have a, a disaster uh, in Cuba uh, for those searching for, for freedom, fighting their lot for their lives, for freedom. Let's, let's, let's be the United States of America. Um, let, let's, let's, let's embrace, let's, let's, let's do humanity here. Uh, it's the right thing to do and, our, and Congress has to act. Enough is enough already. This is really costing lives now. Even though the media won't play it, uh, I'm talking about national media, we have a mess on our hands and it needs to be addressed. Yeah, you know, it's, it's so interesting. There's so many different parts of this and, and they're all about to be on fire depending on the circumstances. And, and what I mean by that is if you look at the last time there was a serious look at comprehensive immigration reform, it was George W. Bush, it was John McCain, and it was Harry Reid. And that tells you how long ago it was. And it got blown up at the time because John McCain decided to run for president. And that meant that this was gonna to be too much of a hot button issue. But, but I guess my point, and having studied this since the late 1970s, 1978 to be specific, um, the call is always for comprehensive immigration reform. And I have the sense that that may be the downfall each time of immigration reform. That if we could take parts of it and, and the parts that we could agree on and, and get those done that, you know, if, if we can't get comprehensive, can we get bits and pieces that would help the United States as well as the people who want to come to this country? It, does that make any sense to you or does it have to be comprehensive? It certainly is a, 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 
a compromise, a strategy. Um, but Sam, quite frankly, uh, knowing the importance of the immigrant population to the United States of America, to knowing the contributions made by immigrants to this great country, um, I, I'm, in, I'm really in no mood for a compromise. I, I'm more in the mood for a comprehensive immigration reform. Let's fix this once and for all, and let's move on to another subject. Uh, that is what has been earned. Uh, that, to me, will uh, be the only answer at this time, because why should we let Congress off the hook? I mean, it's been a long time already. Let's just get together, get people in a room, and let's, let's do something that is, you know, uh, uh, modern, uh, humane. This is the time. This is, again, this is the greatest country in the world. How can we not have a system in place that provides for these folks to, ha to have some dignity, quite frankly, some dignity. Okay, I'm, I'm not disagreeing with you on anything you just said, but I guess my, my point here is that when people talk about comprehensive immigration reform, they talk about uh, amnesty, legalization, however you want to put it. Amnesty is a, you know, a word that sets people on fire, but but some kind of legalization process for people who have been here a long time and with a cutoff of maybe three, four years uh, in the past. Um, but it's also about border security. And then you start to get into a whole nother realm. And the border security part of it is always concentrated on our southern border. It's rarely concentrated on our northern border and it's completely ignored at the ports of entry, which is, in fact, as you know, where the majority of people who come in and overstay their visas come in is through airplanes and, and boats. But Sam, but Sam, all of that is happening because people can't do what you and I are doing right now, having a, having a sensible conversation and strategizing to fix this thing. I'm not saying you, all your points aren't right. I'm saying, why can't, our Congress, why can't we now demand those same folks who, who come and, and, and pander for our votes and, and, and want our votes and, and promise us the world, why can't we hold them to it? Why can't we get both parties in a room and do what's right? And let me also remind everybody that the great Ronald Reagan, he allowed for amnesty, to be quite frank with you, and the world didn't burn, the world, America didn't cease to exist, didn't cease to be, stay great, you know, so listen, I'm not necessarily saying amnesty in here. I'm saying two parties getting together, getting in a room and starting the real dialogue to make things happen. We know that when 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 these political elected officials want something, they get it right. Obama wanted health care and, and, and look, he got his health care. I would you know, he promised us he was going to go for uh, comprehensive immigration reform. And he didn't and he didn't even have that conversation. So we're now I think it's time that we now demand uh, that these folks get in the room and, and be adults. You know, one of the ironies here is in the past, unions were against, uh, you know, having immigration reform because they felt uh, that having um, a lot of people coming across the border that weren't union members um, would work at a lower wage um, and therefore be problematic to unions. Um, now unions look at it as we could have an increase in membership um, and, and so that's one big obstacle out of the way. On the other hand, you have a large group of people, maybe as much as 40% of the country, that go build the wall, stop everybody coming in, America for America. Yeah, listen, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with the wall uh, and how that resonated and took off and, and, and in large part you know, got somebody elected president of the United States. I get it. I find it silly, uh, not because I'm not into border security, but because we're in 2021 and you're telling me we don't have technology. We don't have technology to protect every square inch of, uh, of our borders through technology. Other countries use technology. You know, a wall seems very ancient to me. And again, I, I remind folks that Ronald Reagan demanded that a wall be knocked down and here we are in 2021 and our only solution to immigration is a wall. I find that disgusting and silly actually. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back more with Peter Guzman after this timeout.
7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and YouTube. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. Because of UMC, I'm putting my free time to good use. Because of UMC, she keeps me on my toes. Because of UMC and this guy, I'm here. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development. Building community with every project. Adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. 7 at 7 is available anytime, anywhere. I'm Riley Smith with your Vegas Golden Knights. Watch seven minutes of nonstop news from the Las Vegas Review Journal. Streaming on LVRJ.com and Twitter. Powered by the Las Vegas Review Journal. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Peter Guzman. He is the president of the Las Vegas Chamber, Latin Chamber of Commerce. Um, so unemployment. Um, it seems that Nevada is going to knock about 300 people off the rolls, according to the Nevada Independent. Uh, Elisa Caffarada uh, said that to them uh, because we have risen above a certain level of unemployment in the state of Nevada as we are taping this. Um, but, you know, we still have a huge problem. I mean, I, I, I know in Las Vegas it's pretty much as bad as it is in northern Nevada where employers just cannot find employees. And if they can find employees, it's at way, way higher rates. Um, describe the situation as you see it. Yeah, that's exactly the situation. I have a lot of my members calling, especially in the restaurant uh, uh, sector, you know, saying they can't get employees to come back. And I recently had a round table uh, with the governor and, and our treasurer, Zach Conine, uh, who's done a you know great job uh, finding dollars to help small businesses, but specifically to the employees. Listen, um, we can say that it's because wages aren't high enough. We can say that you know there are folks that don't want to go back to work because they're scared of COVID. I get all of that, but we can't dismiss the fact that an extra three hundred dollars a week, besides unemployment, is not incentivizing people to stay at home. Anybody who thinks that is is just naive and silly. Uh, that is part of the problem, and, and it's going to continue to be part of the problem. All right, so, so where do we end up? Because, you know, it's an interesting conundrum. A lot of noise to get a minimum wage to $15 an hour. And then you see the other side of the coin, which is businesses do not pay that. They pass it along to their customers. So now you're seeing a version of inflation um, that is showing up in the price of goods, the price of meals in restaurants. Uh, there are some restaurants in Reno that are charging an 18% charge uh, as a markup on top of your meal that doesn't include a tip. It just says, you know, to equalize our, our employees' wages. That's a pretty big jump, and that, that's inflation. It is, and that's not part of a person's business plan. I mean, that's a made-up fee now that I believe in the long run is gonna, is gonna hurt the industries. Um, you can't keep nickel and diming people, they, they figure it out. And, and you know, specifically to the, to the restaurant sector, we, at, one, at some point we gotta talk about tips because you know, very few people are making minimum wage when you add in tips, which can be substantial. Uh, I'm not minimizing you know, uh, the minimum wage argument, but I do know that the, our government, our, you know, having small businesses having to compete 
with the United States of America, with the U.S. government, with this extra money every week is, is, is hurting us. And down here in Las Vegas, it is definitely hurting. I'm hearing from all the businesses. We want to get back to work. We need to get back to work. I say let's incentivize people to get back to work. And so we could talk about that in another show, but I came up with some ideas at this round table, including childcare on site, incentive that $300, let's incentivize employers to, to have childcare. Cause some women and men uh, don't, you know, they, it, it's too expensive. Childcare is too expensive to, to go back to work. And so we need to have these conversations. Let's think outside the box. All right. Well, you know, we've got a few minutes here. Um, why don't you throw out a few more ideas? Because the childcare one has really, in my mind, risen to the top of needs that need to be addressed. Because when somebody's paying 15 bucks an hour for childcare and they're only earning 17 bucks an hour, it doesn't make any sense. Not only that, you'll create, in my opinion, and I know small, small businesses won't be able to afford this, but I'm talking about mid-level. You'll create better employees when you're, when you're, when you're actually you know, helping them with their children, having a child care close by or maybe even on site, you can imagine what that does to the morale of employees. So that in itself, you're gonna have better employees. So I think in the long run, that will be better. Other things we can do, listen, the, the US government and state government, uh, you know, they have one of the greatest tools and that's called tax policy. We need to incentivize uh, employers, business owners, uh, through tax policy. Um, I said the same thing about, you know, landlords, when we were having the landlord uh, tenant uh, issues, you know, incentivize landlords to uh, talk to their tenants and, and negotiate and renegotiate through tax policy. You know, use the tax policy in our favor is something that I'm advocating for. Um, and uh, you know, on, first of all, on the child care front, it seems to me that if you want to open a business, it's going to make you a lot of money. Open a child care business because it seems to be that there's an incredible shortage. I was talking uh, to a mom the other day and she said, I had to keep paying my child care payments even though my child wasn't in child care because otherwise I would lose my place. Right. And then then I would be in complete trouble. Um, but but you know, I don't know, and I'm presuming the liability laws around child care are so incredibly strong that that may be, uh, de-incentivize people. There, there was actually a time where people had child care in their homes, um, you know, and, 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 and used to take care of five, six, seven kids in their homes. That, that was big, and I, I think it's died off a little bit, probably because of regulations and things of that nature. But listen, you're absolutely right. I mean, if, if somebody could figure out how a Let's say, let's take a, 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 a retail plaza that has an Albertson, has a big anchor and all that. One of those spots could become a, a childcare facility right just for that plaza. I guarantee you that there's a way to do a business plan for that to make sense for the business owner and for all the employers in that center. All right, let's take another break. We'll be right back. Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at the all-new Nevada Steak at Tamarack Casino. Great food, fine wines, and delectable desserts. Ooh, your good times at Tamarack. Each day, the Children's Advocacy Alliance partners with leaders, legislators, and families across Nevada to improve children's health, education, economic well-being, and safety. We recognize Nevada will be no better than the state of its children. Be a part of this change. Be a supporter of the Children's Advocacy Alliance. For more information, go to caanv.org. I'm Jeff Gehrman, an investigative reporter with the Las Vegas Review Journal. I'm your guide for season two of Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas. You're in with every gangster and hoodlum in the United States. I don't go for that, Mr. Kennedy. Yeah. I don't go for that kind of action. I was on television accused of fronting for the mob. Subscribe to Mobbed Up, The Fight for Las Vegas, Season 2, today on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. The Do It Right guys at Nevada Heating have one mission. Your air conditioner breaks down today. We fix it today. Why sweat for days while your air is down when Nevada Heating can get the job done today and you can get cool again? For nearly 50 years, locally owned Nevada Heating has been getting the job done right. Call today at 323-5585 
or see us online at nevadaheating.com. Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at the all-new Nevada Steak at Tamarack Casino. Great food, fine wines, and delectable desserts. Ooh, you good times at Tamarack. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we continue our conversation with Peter Guzman. He's the president of the Las Vegas Latin Chamber of Commerce. Um, you know, one of the interesting things about all of this is um, that, as we both know, there is a huge black market in this country for employees. Um, they are also getting a big raise. You, you can't even find employees in that market at this point. Very true. Uh, I was talking to some construction folks who, uh, who, who just told me the same thing. They just cannot get employers, employees to come back or even find employees to work. When you, when you, when you throw in the, uh, the, the difficulty in getting supplies now, uh, gas prices going up, you know, this is a critical moment in my opinion uh, that we're gonna be facing and that we're facing right now. So uh, I think everybody better buckle up. We need to get around the tables and come up with out of the box. Uh, stop doing the thing, the same old, same old, where it's different now. And we need to come out uh, with, with different uh, ideas. And, and you are 100% correct. Peter, always a pleasure to have you on the program, sir. Thank you so much for doing this. And we look forward to hearing more of your ideas on our next visit. Sam, always a pleasure to do the show with you. Thank you, sir. And we'll be right back. Brian Culp of Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts, and now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian, and at Brian Culp of Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. Wow, this stuff is great. People are gonna love it. Yes. Yes, they will. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com, tollsdevelopment.com. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. Watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. You can do that now these days. We'll see you on the next broadcast.